It's kind of surprising with how many Isekai that we get. We don't get many Isekai that really kind of blends the line between the other world and the previous world. And while we do get a lot of shows where we have Isekai characters going to another world and gaining a lot of money using their knowledge of the previous world, little do we get characters who actually bring that technology with them to the other world. But yes, saving 80,000 gold in another world for my retirement is one such series that really does bend the norms of the Isekai tropes. Not just survival, but actually trying to gain a one up in the world itself. And yes, the previous world. But this is my first impressions of saving 80,000 gold in another world for my retirement, a 12 episode series that is airing in the winter 2023 anime seasons. I've watched three episodes of it, so let's jump right into it. Saving 80,000 gold in another world for my retirement opens up with Mitsuha. And Mitsuha has unfortunately lost her parents and her brother that she looked up to. And one day she's having some sort of argument with some gentlemen on the cliff side of this beach. And it seems like one of these guys, after she kicked him in the nads, <laughs> pushed her off the cliff itself. And as she's falling and she's screaming out for her life, I don't want to die, I don't want to die, she reaches up and grabs at something, here's some weird noise, and then she's transported to another world. Now, she doesn't know that she's in this other world at first, she kind of just walks around for a little bit, then ends up finding this one girl who takes her into their family, quickly realize these people are speaking some weird gibberish language, but she's safe, and they're taking care of her. Well, one day while she's out with the daughter of this family and they're gathering some resources, they end up getting attacked by some wolves. And trying to save the girl, she quickly pushes her up on this tree and then she goes to flee from the wolves themselves before she's nearly attacked by them, in which time she screams about how she wants to go back home and she appears back home in the previous world. Realizing this, she quickly jumps into action. She grabs her brother's slingshot, she grabs some knives, and then she thinks about going back once again. And yes, so happens, she transports back into this world again where she's able to save this girl using the slingshot and this knife. After falling unconscious out of exhaustion, she ends up meeting this being that she actually ended up grabbing when she was falling to her death. This being is not necessarily a god. It claims that it's a being that evolved over time and is pretty much a form that is made of pure energy. And yes, while she was falling to her death from that cliff, it heard her and she managed to grab a part of its mind. But either way, this being somehow has become a part of Mitsuha. And thus it's granted her what this being is able to do, which is to traverse different worlds. Not only that, she gained the ability to heal very quickly and it also bestows upon her the power to translate other languages. After this, she wakes up and she's immediately given money for taking out these wolves because the town apparently one of these wolves gone. And she realizes part of that money that was given to her is gold. And thus sparks her new idea to utilize her knowledge and resources from both of these worlds in order to make enough money to retire. She doesn't want a bunch of money. She doesn't want to start banking a bunch of money. She just wants enough money by doing trades and whatnot between these two worlds that she can make exactly 80,000 gold so that she can use it for her retirement. And yes, thankfully now, she's able to actually converse with the people of this world using this new skill. But she needs to put together a surefire plan. In this other world, she wants to establish connections to the higher ups, the nobles, and yes, the people of the royal capital. Eventually to open a shop, possibly to sell foods because the food here sucks. All the while she can use equipment that's more modern our times to gain the upper hand. So yes, she's gonna need protection. And that's where our world comes into play. Using the gold that she acquires from this other world, she's able to use it to buy both resources and allies in our world to assist her. And this comes in the form of a foreign mercenary group. Because she's able to travel to wherever she thinks about, she's able to use Google Maps and basically get a visual of an area across the seas where she's able to transport to the other world and then transport back to our world using that image. Using this mercenary group, she's able to take this money that she's made and essentially buy both weapons and Yes, training to use those weapons. It's also indicated this group will also kind of handle the transfer of the gold that she's gonna be making into actual funding she can use in the modern world. Sort of an exchange group that won't ask questions. She just wants them to believe that she's just some rich kid from overseas. And if she's given them money, they don't care to ask any questions. Now that she's established equipment and money, she goes back to this other world where she then meets the nobles there. Under the guise that she's some princess from some other country overseas, she's able to kind of sneak her way in and gain their favor. And it's from here that she heads to the royal capital where she essentially is apparently going to open up a restaurant because again, their food sucks in this world. So my thoughts on saving 80,000 gold in another world for my retirement. So far, I'm really, really enjoying this show. Now I will say, I will admit there's some, there's some rocky storytelling in here. Maybe I might've missed something, but there's, there's certain bits about it that doesn't quite make sense. But overall, I'm really enjoying it. And it's kind of surprising because I came to this series kind of expecting it to be a throwaway show. Like I said at the very beginning, I almost really like this aspect of somebody finally kind of utilizing both worlds. 
jumping between the two of them and using all the resources they have from each one. Which yes, I kind of got the idea that that's what the idea of the show was gonna be based on her gathering 80,000 gold from here and using it over here for retirement. But Mitsuha so far in that regard is a fantastic character. She's very witty, she's smart, she's not a kid, she's actually 18. She keeps pointing out, I'm an adult, I'm an adult, I'm an adult. She looks very young for her age, obviously. But no, like I said, I, I really do like this aspect of not just kind of going to another world and trying to make it big there or trying to get back somehow, but really kind of utilizing the two worlds and jumping between the two of them and using all the tools that you have at your disposal. I, I think if anybody <laughs> was traveling to another world and they realize they can come back, you quickly kind of realize, okay, what can I take advantage of the other world and utilize the resources there to make it big? Yes, the immediate thought is, Shoot, bring things of our modern times over there and sell them for big money. Things like soap or makeup or something that over there is not a normality for everybody to have. A quick way to make a dollar. And yes, the obvious thing that comes there is the idea of gold, which is a much more rare and expensive commodity here is like a regular currency there. Again, what is less valuable one place is much more valuable in another. And again, she's kind of figuring that stuff out. And yes, thankfully, she's not a complete idiot when it comes to having to protect herself. She doesn't have like amazing powers. Yes, she has the ability to regenerate herself, but it's not gonna keep her from dying. So I like the fact that she does go out of her way to figure out how am I gonna protect myself? I'm not some overpowered main character, I'm this girl. And yes, that leads into her actually figuring out a way to protect herself, which again is this mercenary group. And I really do like the fact that it's kind of smart about how it presents that whole thing. Again, she kind of utilizes Google Maps to kind of figure out where this group is at, teleports back and forth in order to kind of jump because she can't teleport in our world. She can't teleport to everywhere in that world but she can teleport between the two worlds to exactly where she envisions. So she has to go there first and then come back over. But I like that her second visit to the mercenary group, again, they start training and they actually did it really well. Like the process in which they explained everything to her was good advice. Trigger finger discipline, not pointing at anything, pointing it away from everybody, not touching the slide. It's all really good advice, even though yes, she has zero recoil whatsoever. And I don't think this girl has like superhuman strength. <laughs> I like the fact that the guy actually goes, well, here's a revolver. It's gonna have a lot of kick to it. And she literally holds it up and no kick to it at all. I'm like, um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they didn't explain that Mitsu has like superhuman strength. I don't think she does though. I know that Colette does. <laughs> Colette's got superhuman strength. But like I said, I, they did a really good job of explaining all that stuff and giving her kind of an opener to, yes, good practices with a weapon. Now, I will admit that the later parts of this explanation was a little bit of a miss. There, like I said, there's there's a couple points in the series so far with the first three episodes where there's kind of misses. One of the staples of the series is her brother. Everything around her decision-making comes from her discussions with this figment of her mind of her brother, this person that she looked up to. This guy was an absolute otaku. He was into survival, he was into isekais, and so every time she has something that she's struggling with, she's conversing with this imaginary brother. And so yes, when she's target practicing, the immediate thing that comes to mind is, would you be willing to shoot somebody? And so it kind of turns this whole very kind of goofy rendition between Tsuyoshi, her brother, mentioning the idea that it's bad to take a life, while at the same time Mitsuha telling him that if somebody is coming to attack me, they've given up their humanity, thus they're inhuman, and thus I'm willing to protect myself. Which yes, in the end, makes a great logic as to her wanting to protect herself, but I felt it was kind of just a really goofy way of really presenting it. The other miss they kind of had was they put a lot of emphasis on the idea of Mitsuha meeting the count of this area, this Klaus von Boses. At first I thought that she was trying to establish a connection with this noble of this area because she wanted to use him in some way. But in the end, it almost turned into it just being him being a stepping stone to going to the royal capital. I understand why she wants to go to the royal capital. And you can say that the reason why she met the noble was so that she had connections with nobility of somewhere before going to the royal capital, but she didn't really lay that out very well. The explanation of why she kind of step stooled from there doesn't make much sense, or at least it's not clear. Again, I can make assumptions as to why she had to go to the nobles was to gain favor, thus have some sort of letter of recommendation basically. But again, it didn't make much sense. She could have easily gone directly to the royal capital and done the same thing. Still, I really did like the interaction with Klaus because I think what that ends up doing is she goes there, she ends up tricking her way into the house, ends up discovering that these are really good people and then basically tricking them into gaining favor. While at the same time, she ends up falling into <laughs> making a bond with them. Her initial desire is to come in there and talk about how she's some sort of noble from another country 
and yes, make them feel sympathy for her. She dresses up all pretty with the clothes from our world, makes herself look like a noble, tells her fake story, and eventually gives them gifts, oddities of our world that seem like precious items. So a folding knife or a perfect pearl necklace. But what happens is as she's spending time with them, eventually she forgets that she's in the presence of somebody else's family. And then she says something to the effect of her mother and father. And she breaks down. And I thought it was a really cool kind of, almost a lapse of judgment where she lets her guard down, gets comfortable, and then slips something out. And that memory of her family connects with the people in front of her. And so she breaks down. It was an extremely emotional scene that I, it caught me off guard. I'm like, wait, <laughs> I'm actually getting teary-eyed. What, what is, where is this coming from? She's seen Klaus and Iris as her parents. And for a brief moment, called them mom and dad. And that led to them accepting her as pretty much their own daughter. Because again, she technically has lost her parents. And she made that her story here. But in trying to fool these people, she ended up kind of forming a bond with them, whether she liked it or not. A true bond, not a bond through deception. The only other miss that the series really had so far is the later part of the second episode. It gets really deep into Mitsuha, really kind of looking into the history of our world and storytelling that would explain like bandits and stuff like that, which didn't really make any sense. Like, why would she be looking into our history or possibly even like night novels and stories just to get an idea of what would be in this other world? It's not our history. It's a different world. So I almost felt like that whole segment was kind of a throwaway. She could have easily just used the stories of her brother to explain, oh yeah, there's bandits, so I gotta protect myself. But again, it does kind of lead in the whole aspect of trying to figure out ways of protecting herself. But I think besides those three misses, and like I said, technically the second one can kind of be explained and it ended up turning into a really good segment. I've really been enjoying this show. The comedy so far has been pretty solid. I especially like the later parts of, I think it was the third episode, where you have Mitsuha's trying to give up this pearl necklace to the mother and she starts freaking out. Uh, she starts selling like different things. She has like this folding knife and they, they, they're, she's basically just selling it to these people in this family meeting. And the kids are like, is there anything else we could buy? And she's like, oh, well, the only thing, other thing I have is some underwear. And literally the oldest brother stands up and says, I'll buy it. <laughs> Everybody looks at him like, wait, what? And then the younger brother's like, yeah, I'll buy it too. <laughs> uh, it was uh, weird, weird family. But like I said, the, the Bozes family was was kind of heartwarming in a, in a sense. And I, I do like that idea of her essentially establishing a family in this other world. Technically, she has Colette from the first village she was at. Now she's got this, this noble family that's kind of brought her in. She's already kind of establishing relationships through just kind of random encounters that she has. But I will be interested to see how they sort of kind of bring them into the fold going forward. Because again, she's leaving them all behind every single time she meets somebody and she's going to this other place. She's going to the Royal Capital, which again, she's kind of implying that she's going to open up a shop or some sort of restaurant. And yes, technically utilizing the knowledge and equipment that she has in the previous world, I'm sure she can really make an amazing restaurant. But of course, it's probably gonna come down to spices and stuff like that because even with this noble family, the food was terrible. Visually, the show is not that Great. It looks a lot better than I thought it was going to. I think the PB gave me a really bad impression of visually how it was going to look. But I think overall, it's it's pretty solid. Now, audio is, I, I think, of a little bit of a problem. I don't know if this is just the masters that were sent to Crunchyroll or something like that. But the audio had like several points where it just fell off. For instance, when she first meets this being that she got her powers from, like as it's leaving, it almost sounds like her voice disappears and then it kind of slowly comes back. And this is something that happened again later on where it almost sounded like the audio for the, some of the characters' voices just suddenly got louder. So I don't know, somebody at the studio, figure out your audio. <laughs> it's not like a huge issue, but it did stand out. Anyhow, I'm really liking the show so far. Again, I think a lot of it's to do with her being able to use tools and stuff from each world, transferring over weaponry, even a moped. <laughs> She was traveling in the other world with his moped and then this adventurers appeared in front of her and she was afraid they'd see her. So she transferred back to our world. And yes, the first thing that came to her mind was her bedroom. So she landed right on her bed with her moped. And she's not a character that's kind of afraid of defending herself. And I really do find that refreshing. She's not just some frail girl. She's not a damsel in distress, but she's not an overpowered main character. So she's using her mind and, you know, tools at her disposal to protect herself. But anyhow, that's my thoughts so far on saving 80,000 gold in another world for my retirement. We'll see where it goes from here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure that like button down below, comment. Let me know what's thought of this series if you're gonna be checking it out. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button so you got my content, I do news reviews, first impressions, top list if it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you wanna support the channel more, we have a Patreon link, tips link, and a super thanks button down below. I greatly appreciate everybody that does, and y'all take care.